taking the spices that they had prepared. They found a stone rolled away from the tomb. When they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this sudden, this, this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven, all and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves, then he went home amazed at what had happened. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Folks, I'm ready for Easter. 
Easter. I don't want to just kind of fix this stuff anymore. I don't want to get a little bit better. I want dead places to be alive again. I don't want lost causes to become less lost. I want lost causes to be those success stories that shine that everybody needs to know about. I want <coughs> resurrection. As Christians, though, I think a lot of times we forget what resurrect or excuse me, what Christian means. Christian basically means something like little Christ, as in Jesus wannabes. It means that like Jesus, we too are actually called to practice being and doing the things that Jesus did, even if it's resurrection. And so my guess is we're going to look a little foolish at some point. And that's a silly endeavor. I don't know if you all have noticed that the resurrection industry in the United States hasn't really taken off. <laughs> Maybe that it's not a really high percentage endeavor. But I think also that we forget when we were first called Christians that this was a demeaning term. That it was a term people said when they laughed. Jesus wanted these. Folks who think they can be like that guy. That's what we think. We think if Jesus bothered to do it, we should bother trying. So if at some point we're not a little bit laughed at, I wonder if it's because we've lost sight of Jesus along the way. Why do you look for the living among the dead? That was the line that stood out to me. That was the definition of my Lenten season. Why do you look for the living among the dead? It's easy to do. It's easy to tone down this life from what we've been called to do with what seems practical. Take a quick look at the women in the story. These are not faithless women. They're the ones who get up at dawn with spices for, and oils for Jesus' body. And if you'll notice, the men haven't, you know, rolled out of bed for this. You know, those, those 11 disciples that are left, they haven't got anywhere. These are faithful people. They're doing exactly what they want to do. Which at that point, there's a dead body. It's been dead for about three days. It's time to put something on it that makes it less offensive. They were acting the most faithful way they knew to act. The, well, a while back, I, uh, <laughs> I bought a cheap steak a while back. This is a ridiculous thing to share, but in my mind, it, there's a connection here, so bear with me. I bought a, a really cheap steak a while back, but I was going to beat the system, you know, because, because I, I'm better than everybody. That's what I, was, I decided. And so um, I, I was going, all I had to do was spice the steak up. Like, right? buy a cheap steak and then just really, really spice it up. And so I mean, I covered the thing, covered it in kosher salt, black pepper, white pepper, coriander, garlic powder, onion powder, and a touch of dill. <laughs> that first bite, and it tasted like a really cheap steak covered in kosher salt, black pepper, white pepper. <laughs> 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 I'm not a quitter. I'm going to embrace a quitter. So what I did after that was uh, I, I, I sliced it into smaller pieces and started putting it in other dishes um, to kind of cover up the taste a little bit, but the steak was still going to be in it. I think ultimately it ended up as like a, a steak omelet. Uh, which tasted, incidentally, a lot like a uh, omelet uh, with cheap steak covered in kosher salt. It took me a while, but ultimately, what I started to figure out was this: maybe this thing was just bad, like down to its core. <laughs> maybe spicing this thing up was just never going to fix it. Why did we look for the living among the dead? Here's the audacious claim of the Christian. Here's why I'm realizing Lent was so frustrating. We don't just believe in making the world a slightly better version of itself. No, as followers of Jesus Christ, we actually believe in resurrection. We're frustrated in Lent because we need, we want Easter. In a few minutes, we're going to have people come forward for a baptism. And what they are saying in that, in that symbol of entrance into the universal church, what they're saying is not that they're going to be a slightly better version of themselves. What 
they're saying is God has made them something totally new. Many of you know Anne Lamont. She's, a, uh, she's an author. And I, I love her take on faith. And she wrote this about her friend Pammy um, in the last few weeks before her friend Pam, Pammy died of uh, bluechip cancer. And I just want to read this to you. She said, when I was 38, my best friend Pammy died. And we went shopping about two weeks before she died, and she was in a wig and a wheelchair. I was buying a dress for this boyfriend that I was trying to impress, and so I bought a tighter, shorter dress than I was used to. And I said to her, Pammy, do you think this makes my hips look big? And she said to me so calmly, and you don't, you don't have that kind of time. And I think Easter has been about the resonance of that simple statement. That when I stop, when I go into prayer, to contemplation, to meditation, when I breathe again and do the sacred action of plopping down and hanging my head and being done with my own agenda, I hear that. You don't have that kind of time. As Christians, we are not waiting around for the perfect version of ourselves to finally happen. We're not waiting for a future time when God has fixed everything. We're claiming Jesus already has. And that we get to start living now. Resurrection is a different animal than we're used to. Resurrection doesn't spice up the dead to make it less offensive. It doesn't house train it to make it more socially acceptable. It doesn't donate to the dead just to ease the problem. It prescribes no pain numbing pill to the dead. Resurrection doesn't have any manners. It calls death exactly what it is. It's dead. And then after all that, resurrection has the audacity to command death to live. This is our business. We are not in the spice business as Christians. We are in the resurrection business. Robert Dow Johnson said, we are an Easter people living in a Good Friday world. So, we could spend all of our time spicing up cheap steaks, dressing up those things that are no less dead than when we started, polishing up our outsides, giving just enough time or effort or money to alleviate poverty, shoot for a status of maybe acceptable with God, maintain a cordial relationship with our family, those we don't really agree with, or we can spend our lives on audacious things like raising lizards from the dead. It's called resurrection. We can demand relationship with our families. We can demand to be a part of the solution to the cycles that enable poverty. We can be more than just cordial. We can be resurrection. And we can be so because he is risen. He is risen indeed.